application of the use of Hagen in optimization problems. So with this question, it's uh, telling us that we are given a demand function as well as a total cost function, and we need to find values of Q1 and Q2 that maximize profits. And the second part requires us to find the second order condition, right, so that we can tell whether profits are really maximized or minimized, right? So the given information, we are given a demand function for Q1, we are given a demand function for Q2, as well as a total cost function, right? So to solve, the first thing that we need to do is to define the objective function, right, which is basically our profit function from the given information. So what we need for us to define a profit function, we need the average revenue, function, we multiply it to quantity, right, for good one, as well as the average revenue for uh, good two, multiplied by the quantity two, then less total cost. All right, so from the given information, what we have is the quanti uh, quantity demanded functions, right, the demand functions, not the average revenues, right? So the first thing that we need to do is to uh, find the average revenues P1 and P2. Right. So we basically need to find the inverse demand functions, in other words. All right. So to solve for P1 and P2, we are also going to use uh, Kramer's rule, right? Because we have a system of equations. We've got two linear equations and we can use this uh, to find our unknowns P1 and P2. Right. So to find P1 and P2, we separate endogenous variables from exogenous variables. So what we want is only have elements that have got P1 and P2 on the left-hand side of the equation and have everything else on the right-hand side of the equation, right? So if you look at the demand function Q1, what you need to do is to take uh, 90 to the other side of the equation, right? And also for the demand function Q2, we take H to the other side of the equation. And that way we have separated endogenous and exogenous variables, right? So with the two new equations, we proceed to uh, define our AX equals to D matrix notation, right? We come up with your A matrix, which has got minus 6, minus 2, minus 2, and minus 4. And then we've got your column vector P1, P2 of the unknowns. And then the D vector is got Q1 minus 90 and Q2 minus 80, right? Um, Kramer's rule requires us to find the determinant first of the A matrix, Right? So the, the determinant of the A matrix is going to be the difference between the product of the diagonal elements and the product of the off diagonal elements, which is 20, right? Once we have ascertained the determinant of the A matrix, we also have to find the determinant of your A1 matrix, right? So to find the determinant of A1 matrix, you replace the elements in the first column of your A matrix with your D vector, right? And then you find the determinant of that, right? So now we are going to multiply um, our diagonal elements and then subtract the product of the off diagonal elements. And in this case, your A is going to come out as equals to minus 4Q1 plus 200 plus 2Q2, right? In the same manner, we also find your determinant of your A2. First, you replace the elements of the second column of your A matrix with your D vector. Right, and then we find the determinant of that new A2 matrix, right, and it comes out as minus 6Q2 plus 300 plus 2Q1. Now, to solve for P1 and P2, we use the Kramer's rule, which says that P1 is going to be the determinant of A1 divided by the determinant of A, and P1 in this case is going to be minus 0.2Q1 plus 10 plus 0.1Q2, and your P2 is going to be minus 0,3Q2 plus 15 plus 0,1Q1, right? So now that we have got your P1 and P2, which are your average revenues, we are going now to define the profit function, which is the objective function in this analysis, right? Which is basically going to come out as your profit is equal to minus 2,2Q1 squared plus 10Q1 plus 2.8Q1 Q2 minus 2.3Q2 squared plus 15Q2, right? The next step in solving uh, 
for your maximization problem, your optimization problem is to take the first order conditions, right, on the profit function and set them equal to zero, right? So we'll find the partial derivative of the profit function with respect to Q1 as well as the partial derivative of the profit function with respect to Q2, right? And we have also defined two new equations, right? So at this point, we can use either the Kremers rule, we can use the inverse method, we can use the elimination method to solve for Q1, Q2, depending on what the question is asking for. But with this specific question, it didn't specify which method to proceed with. So we can use the easier one, which is the Kremers rule, because we've got linear equations there. It's possible for us to present these two equations in a matrix notation, AX equals to D, right? So after you've moved your exogenous variable to the other side of the equation, you can define your AX equals to D matrix, right? So in this case, it's going to be minus 4Q1, minus 2.8Q2, minus 2.8Q1, minus 4.6Q2, uh, uh, right? So now your A matrix is that, and you've got your column vector of the unknowns as well as your, your D vector. Right, so we find the determinant of your A matrix it comes out as 12.4. We find the determinant of your A1, same way as we did in the previous slides. Right, first we replace the first column of your A matrix with the D column, and then you find the determinant of that, it's going to be equals to 4. We also find the determinant of your A2, where you are replacing the second column of your A matrix with the elements of your D vector. Right, and find the determinant of that is 38. And we solve your Q1 star is basically dividing your A1, determinant of A1, with the determinant of your A matrix, and you get 0 0.32. And uh, your Q2 star is equals to 3.06, right? Now, you move on to finding the second order conditions so that we can ascertain if these two solutions actually maximize profits, right? So your Haitian, you know the condition that the determinant of a, a Hagen, when you have linear systems of equation, is going to be equal to the determinant of your A matrix, which in this case is going to be 12.4, right? So the two conditions, we look at the FXX, which is minus 4.4, less than zero, and you look at the de uh, determinant of the Hagen is 12.4 and it's positive. And now we can conclude that we have a negative definite end definitely the quantities for Q1 star and Q2 maximize profits.